a couple of days ago, I made a video about the Ramadan lights, which are glowing over central London right now, and not a sign of any Easter decorations. And the somewhat incendiary title of that video was, It Looks Like Easter's Been Cancelled. Well, that was because of the lights. It looked like Easter had been cancelled. Now we find out it really has been cancelled. The BBC have cancelled it. I'm Granny Opteryx. Well, I, I don't, I'm not a regular watcher of the BBC anymore, but I, I have not seen anything in the BBC about the Ramadan lights taking over central London. And uh, I doubt I shall. Here is an article in the Telegraph, the 29th of March. That's from yesterday as I'm making this video. BBC abandons Christianity after dropping traditional Easter service broadcast. So the BBC, which is supposed to be the voice of the British establishment, um, yeah, it, it gave, it's supposed to give a Christmas service. You expect it to give a Christmas service and an Easter service. And, um, well, if you do expect that, your expectations uh, will have been dashed. I'm looking forward to the December the 25th Kwanzaa service uh, coming up in the next few months. A uh, corporation criticised, I'd like to know who's criticising them, as celebratory mass from King's College, Cambridge, is removed from listings. The BBC has been accused, I, I wish they'd say who accused them, of turning its back on Britain's Christian faith after scrapping its broadcast of the traditional Easter service from King's College, Cambridge. The programme has been dropped in favour of religious coverage elsewhere across the corporation's platforms. So it's a sort of dissipation, you know, like, like the smoke that they're blowing into your eyes. It will all diffuse uh, sooner or later until it's no longer there. It comes after the BBC decided to invite confirmed atheist and humanist campaigner Alice Roberts on the Good Friday edition of Desert Island Discs. <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't laugh. I shouldn't laugh. It's it's not quite the same as asking um, somebody from the, uh, the the BNP, the British National Party, what used to be. I think it's stopped now. Um, somebody from the B. Well, I, I don't know. No, let's get on with it. It's like inviting somebody from the Ku Klux Klan to talk on Martin Luther King Day or something like. that. It's almost surreal. Miss Roberts, the Professor of Public Engagement in Science at the University of Birmingham and Vice President of the charity Humanist UK, refused the Desert Island Disc tradition of taking a Bible with her alongside the complete works of Shakespeare. Well, you know, she's an idiot. I mean, she really is an idiot. The Bible isn't just a religious book, especially the Old Testament. It's actually several books. The Bible, it's a library of books from earlier times, earlier myths, even if you don't regard that as a particularly Hebrew myth. It reflects things that happened at that time. Story of the flood, for instance, and how people react in uh, situations like that, like the way Noah's daughters reacted after they, they thought the whole world was dead. Um, they acted badly, uh, but they, they rationalized, rationalized the way they were acting. I mean, as a work of literature, it's really, well, as Jordan Peterson said, it tells you about human nature. And uh, if you don't know what Desert Island Discs is, it's a it was taken from a time when, you know, all you had 
was a record player and record. So you had three minutes uh, to listen to a record, you know, a wind up record player. And what you could do was, if you were stranded on a desert island, what 10 records would you take? And then you were asked, what books would you take? And usually the people say, well, the Bible and Shakespeare. And then uh, some, they were given the choice of something else. And uh, Miss Roberts is being very, you know, stringently humanist by refusing to take the Bible uh, along with her, her regulation books. Uh, critics have said the BBC appeared to be deliberately abandoning. What, what, what do they mean, appeared? <laughs> they have deliberately abandoned the Christian faith as an official part of their year. That's what they've done. OK, yeah, Andrea Williams, the chief executive of Christian Concern, said the BBC's motto, well, so far anyway, is nation shall speak peace unto nation. And that's a biblical, that's a biblical prophecy. <sighs> that's from the Bible, not eternal war, eternal peace. OK, and then, uh, well, hang on, where do I see the word vibrant here. When you see vibrant, you know you've got a problem. So it said its faith and hope for spring season will showcase a vibrant mix of programmes across TV and radio channels, shining a spotlight of faith at a time when many of the major religions are marking key moments in the calendar. Yeah, well, what they mean is Islam, don't they? The BBC, which is supposed to be... The voice of Britain, which is still a Christian country, and we have a minority of uh, Muslims in this country. And I, I don't know what it is, but it's somewhat. Um, hang on a minute. I'm going to cut here because I'm going to check. Right. It's 3.9 million. That is 6.5%. Uh, of people who are Muslim. And that is still a side religion. And you may talk about it, you may commemorate it, you may hold programmes talking about it, but you cannot displace Christianity with it. Not at 6.5%. Well, that's my two penneth. Anyway, till next time. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Grembo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.